Montgomery County deputies are trying to figure out if there's a connection to the crimes after burglars hit two storage units in two days. Friends, family, and firefighters from across Kentucky gather in Louisville to say goodbye to Lexington firefighter Matt Logsdon. A change of leadership in Great Britain this week. Find out who will be taking over Prime Minister David Cameron. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon on this Monday. Sam Dick and Amber Philpott reporting. The Sheriff's Office in Montgomery County is investigating two thefts which may be connected. They say burglars have stolen items from two storage units in two days, just a couple of miles away from one another. As WKYT's Mark Barper reports, surveillance cameras capture some clues. It's our top story at 430. The first storage unit break in was reported here at Ambergie's mini storage in Jeffersonville. Then this morning, a second break in was discovered a few miles away in Camargo. Investigators are now trying to figure out if the two cases are connected. The man who owns the unit that was hit in Jeffersonville is in the National Guard. He also works part time as a deputy. According to the property owner, a man sliced through the lock on the unit with bolt cutters yesterday. Surveillance cameras caught the bold burglar carrying out the crime in the middle of the day. He was driving this white car with this woman. The owner of the property says he thinks the crooks just got away with video games. He tells WKYT it has been more than a year since the storage units have been targeted by a burglar. In the last case, a man from Powell County broke into the storage units and sold the stolen property to pawn shops in Lexington. Just like last time, the property owner hopes this case will end with the bad guys behind bars and the stolen property back where it belongs. To do that, deputies say they need your help. They're asking you to take a close look at this picture. They're hoping someone will recognize this woman or this car and will send in a tip that will lead to an arrest. In Montgomery County, Mark Barber, WKYT. At this time, deputies are still trying to figure out if the Camargo break-in is related. They're asking anyone with information to give them a call. A Lexington firefighter who was an inspiration to many people was laid to rest this afternoon. Matt Loxton passed away last week after a courageous battle with cancer. Sean Moody's in Louisville now with more on how Loxton is being remembered. Here inside Northeast Christian Church, people talked about the kind of man and firefighter Matt Logston was. I got to sit in and listen to the speakers. Lexington Fire Chief Kristen Chilton said we all need to honor the legacy Matt Logston left behind. Firefighters from several departments were here. Logston served with the Lexington Fire Department for 10 years, but lived here in Louisville and had also served with other departments. Inside the church, several firefighters spoke. Chief Chilton talked about Logston's legacy, including helping to get that firefighter cancer bill passed. One of Logston's fellow Station 8 members told his family he talked about them all the time, especially his kids. He said he was proud of his sons and their football and academic achievements and said his daughter was the love of his life. Captain Dustin White had served with Logsdon at Station 8. He said it's been a tough time for them, but they're really focusing on Logsdon's family. A lot of hugs coming at the fire station, and what, we've been so busy with you know, trying to make sure that, that the family's taken care of, because this is about them, really. I mean, it, it, it really doesn't matter what we think right now, as long as, long as the family's comfortable and, and it gets everything taken care of that they need. I'm talking about family. That was one of the big points the speakers inside there made. One of them asked every firefighter in that room to stand up, and they told Longston's wife and children that that is their family now, and they'll always be there for them. In Louisville, Sean Moody, WKYT. Thank you, Sean. There is another fundraiser for Longston's family coming up on July 19th at Connemara Golf Course. It is a mainly dry day in the bluegrass with sunny skies and higher humidity levels. But those rain chances increase as we head throughout the work week. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hi, Chris. Hey, guys. Our Monday, as you mentioned, starting out with a little more humidity compared to the weekend. But you got to remember that weekend was awfully, awfully nice. Had a September feel to it, didn't it? Look outside right now. Normal to below normal temperatures yet again across central and eastern Kentucky. A lot of mid 80s across the east and southeast, 84 London, uh, mid to upper 80s across parts of central and western sections of the area. Defender radar network has been tracking some scattered showers and some thunderstorms across parts of southern Kentucky. Stuff down here, nothing to get overly excited about right now. A little thunder and lightning uh, from time to time with a few of these cells around Russell Springs toward the Lake Cumberland area and especially into western. Parts of Kentucky. 
We have a weak boundary that is out there to our south that is out ahead of a bigger push of juice coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. So the stormy setup is returning to the bluegrass state. And you know what that means? It's a broken record. Some locally heavy rains, a possibility as we get deeper into the weekend, especially toward that weekend. I'll show you why the rain chances look to increase as of now. Guys, seven day forecast in a few minutes. The number of overdose deaths in Kentucky continues to climb, and state officials worry this epidemic could spawn more problems. The CDC has targeted 54 counties, half of them in eastern Kentucky, as being at high risk for an HIV outbreak since it can be spread by sharing needles. The CDC took into account high rates of substance abuse and overdose deaths. Right now, the state is monitoring the number of people with HIV and looking for any upticks or swings to try and prevent them from turning into outbreaks. There's just too much opioid addiction in this, in this country and in this state. And it's the worst drug epidemic this country's ever been in. And it's not going away anytime soon. Tonight on WKYT News at 6, what health officials think is the best defense for stopping a possible HIV outbreak. The political fallout from Britain's vote to leave the European Union continues today, with the UK on track to have a new prime minister by Wednesday. Willa Marks has the latest now from London. Lawmaker Theresa May will be Britain's next prime minister, replacing David Cameron, who resigned after the Brexit vote to leave the European Union. Brexit means Brexit, and we are going to make a success of it. May will be the second woman in history to lead the UK. I am therefore with her final opponent withdrew from the race Monday. I am honoured and humbled to have been chosen by the Conservative Party to become its leader. May is no stranger to 10 Downing Street, having served for the past six years as Home Secretary responsible for national security. Markets have been unsettled and the British pound has crashed since the vote to leave the EU. May's challenge about out saying the country needed a new leader as soon as possible to restore stability. May has been a member of Parliament for nearly 20 years, earning a reputation for toughness on policing, prisons, terrorism and immigration. But when she takes charge on Wednesday, her toughest challenge may be to unite a nation that's deeply divided. Villa Mark, CBS News, London. Prime Minister David Cameron will chair his last cabinet meeting tomorrow before handing in his resignation to Queen Elizabeth on Wednesday. The son of country music singer Craig Morgan is missing after a boating accident in an area where the Tennessee River meets the Kentucky Lake. Morgan's publicist says crews are searching for 19-year-old Jerry Greer. The sheriff's office says two teenagers were tubing when they had an accident and one teen didn't surface. Both were wearing life jackets. In a statement, the family says it's grateful for support and prayers, but is requesting privacy during this difficult time. The man behind the hit Broadway musical Hamilton taking his final curtain call with the original cast. How he celebrated the moment coming up. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. You know, for many of us, it's three in a row of absolutely gorgeous weather days out there. Humidity still not bad at all. Temperatures normal or a little below normal on a Monday and a good looking sky in Lexington. Southern Kentucky, we're looking in your direction there. And if you squint and look way over the horizon, you're going to notice some thunderheads trying to pop up into Southern Kentucky. And we'll show you what those look like on your Defender Radar Network in a moment. 87 degrees in Lexington. Humidity is at 44%, so it is low still. You notice we don't have much of a heat index to talk about today. A typical brand of July air, although it's a little cooler than what it actually should be this time of year in the eastern Kentucky. Here we go, tracking a couple of those scattered showers and thunderstorms into southern parts of the area. Some light rain here on top of Lake Cumberland toward the Interstate 75. Folks here into London, Corbin, Williamsburg, east of there. It's been a little soggy. Bell County into Harlan County as well, with some of those showers and thunderstorms lifting their way on in from southwest to northeast. And we've got some more juice that is pushing all of this. That'll be on top of us over the next few days. Front across the plain states. That's a big area of low pressure right now. Poor folks into the high plains, upper Mississippi Valley have been absolutely drenched over the past few days with some strong and severe thunderstorms. Heading into the day tomorrow, a lot of mid and upper 80s with a better chance for some thunderstorms around. And that same front we were just looking at gets in here as we go toward Thursday. You know what it is likely to do? 
like several of its predecessors, it's going to get toward Kentucky, it's going to put the brakes on, and it's going to keep an increase in the rain chances coming up behind that. So as we go through the next week, every single day, we'll have at least some scattered showers and some thunderstorms. Three-day threat track will show. We'll have to keep an eye on Thursday. A few of the storms around into the afternoon and evening can be a bit on the strong side. Over the next few days, you're going to have some sun, you're going to have some clouds, you're going to have some muggy conditions, and yep, a couple of thunderstorms that will go up as well. This is an environment, I know, sound like a broken record. It's an environment, though, from a weather perspective that can drop some heavy rains over the next week and change. Let's go through the short term. Early tomorrow morning, watch for a shower, a thunderstorm to blossom. And tomorrow, better coverage farther north compared to what we were looking at today on that hour by hour forecast. We go through tomorrow evening, still some thunder, lightning that will be noted from time to time. Again, not going to rain all day tomorrow, not going to rain all day on Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon temperatures will make a run into the upper 80s, flirting with 90. And we haven't had a whole lot of 90s again this summer so far. I do think that'll change as we get into August. But looking out there now, we go into Wednesday afternoon, more of the same with some of those scattered showers and thunderstorms. Second half of Thursday is when we may get ourselves into a little situation where I could see a line of strong thunderstorms dropping in from northwest to southeast during that time. So we up the chances for storms later Thursday. If we make a run at 90 ahead of that, better chance for some stronger storms with that. We'll drop the temperatures back again this weekend. It will be awfully, awfully muggy, a tropical feel. And yeah, more thunder, a few storms, blah, 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 as we go into the extended forecast this weekend. I think that carries us into early next week as well. You know, I know it's Monday, yes. but I'm looking at Saturday and Sunday. We need to do some tweaking Listen, on that. You know, I we gave, always look ahead. I to gave the you a good Saturday and Sunday. I know. That's in the rearview mirror, though, right? Yeah. Get Give some credit. How soon we forget. <laughs> huh? Tough crowd. Tough Chris, crowd. Thanks. Thanks. Right, guys. <laughs> there you go. Now you're ready for your big trial. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about at Stage Right Acting, preparing for their production of Legally Blonde, a preview when we return here on WKYT. It is a great place here in town for budding actors to work on their craft, stage right acting. Right now they are getting ready for a performance of Legally Blonde, the musical. Deanne Stevens has a sneak peek. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are here at Stage Right Acting. We're right in the middle of this class and workshop going on and rehearsal for Legally Blonde. Take a look at the special scene. Oh, hey there. Welcome to the Hammer Fam. Make me... A brunette. What? Honey, why? You're a genetic lotto win. Okay, something else is going on. Sit down. Paulette's listening. Spill. Okay, I'm Elle Woods, and I came all the way out here to go to Harvard Law School. Oh, that's a good school. I know, right? And I did it to follow my one true love born around here. And now he's... He's dating this evil preppy. <gasps> oh, so what's she got that you don't got? She's... Serious with mousy brown hair. Apparently, that's what Rora wants, so you have to make me a brunette. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you know the number one reason behind all bad hair decisions? It's love. I can help you, I've been there before. Good job, girl. I don't want to interrupt. I want to keep watching. I know. You want to keep watching. They're, they're fantastic. <laughs> Miles Meehan is with us from Stage Right Acting, and Miles himself knows very well what it's like to be on the stage on Broadway. We figured out 17 years 17. ago. He was one of our first good kids on WKYT, by the way. If you guys. I still have the plaque. Yeah, the, remember the segment we used to do? Love what you're doing here with the crew. Tell us about Legally Blonde. Yes, yeah, so Legally Blonde um, is a fantastic show. It's a musical about Elle Woods. And that'll be going on uh, July 22nd to the 24th. So it's coming up here soon down at the Downtown Art Center. Yeah. You can get tickets at stagerightacting.com slash tickets. Um, this is fantastic. Uh, the cast is just incredible to work with. And it's just such a funny show. But beneath the surface, there's a lot to learn from it, too. Well, you have classes mm -hmm. and workshops. And we showed all the fabulous audience here. Are you guys having fun here at Stage Right Acting? Yeah, the audience and these kiddos are learning so much by being a part of this. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, our, our motto is quality performers and quality people. So uh, we want to train them up to uh, to audition and to do shows around the community, but also we want to train them to be good people. Because, yeah. as you know, um, 
acting, you can learn a lot of different things from it and take it to any career you choose. Right. Okay, so how do folks get more info on Stage Right Acting and tickets for Legally Blonde? Yeah, well, you can go to the website, stagerightacting.com. Uh, that's for class, uh, information about our classes, and we have classes starting up in August that'll go throughout the year. Um, and tickets are there, too, at stagerightacting.com slash tickets. Okay, we're leaving you with a special song now from Legally Blonde. We're going to let Miles push the play button here. Acting.com. I feel bad for interrupting her. Sounds so good. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about. Back to you guys. The creator of the Broadway smash hit Hamilton took his final bow this weekend. A listers, including Spike Lee, Jennifer Lopez, and Secretary of State John Kerry were on hand to see Pulitzer Prize and Tony Award winner Lynn Manuel Miranda in the role for the last time. The audience gave Miranda a one minute standing mm -hmm. ovation during the opening number. His final curtain call was set to the theme song of the West Wing. Before the after party, he marked the occasion by cutting off his signature long hair. Up next for Miranda is Disney's uh, sequel, Mary Poppins Returns, set for release in 2018. Not all goats are created equal. Why some are going through a lot of trouble to find one four-hoofed creature the perfect mate. Lexington Burger Week kicks off today. More than 35 restaurants are participating this year. Each restaurant will create a $5 special burger with its own unique twist. Plus, the burgers are not part of the regular menu. Now, last year, 21,000 burgers were sold. We have a full list of all the participating restaurants on our website, WKYT.com. I've been kind of looking at the list, mm -hmm. and there's everything under the sun. So we just helped burgers. you plan out all week of eating. Yes. Lunch, dinner, Got done it. for you. Even breakfast. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think, Chris? A burger for breakfast. You had me at burger. That's <laughs> all I can say. And you know what? Listen, if any restaurants watching right now, you want to send a sample or two our way, far be it from us to stop you. Just saying. Uh, look outside. I'm giving you nice weather after all. Look outside right now. Very nice conditions for many of us across central and eastern Kentucky. Mix of sun and some clouds. Temperatures uh, are below normal in a lot of cases yet again. Only drawback, southern Kentucky. We've been watching at least a couple of scattered showers and some thunderstorms here. What will happen is that a lot of that will die out this evening and then refires across the entire region as we get into the day tomorrow as our stormy setup makes a return visit to the Bluegrass State. We'll touch more on that when I come back a little later on at 5. Right now, let's get a check on traffic. Here's Officer Don. Hey, just went over the circle on the north side. Just to give you a heads up, that stall car, the inner loop of the circle at North Broadway is over to the side, so not a big factor for us. As far as collisions go, we cleared the earlier two crashes around town, uh, so we're pretty much okay on the south side and north side of Lexington. Leaves us with our drive time to Rochelle's. It's normal past the castle, past the airport this afternoon, on into Woodford County, and 64 in the Clark County looks good. Now back here in the studio. A healthy eating contest and goat love. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. Well, it's not the most popular eating contest, but instead of hot dogs, competitors in Buffalo, New York competed in the world's healthiest eating championship this weekend. The competition was called Kale Yeah. <laughs> Participants had to eat as much kale salad as they could in eight minutes. Professional eater Gideo OJ 
ate 25 and a half bowls of the salad and was crowned champion of the inaugural Kale Cup, winning the top prize of $2,000. Organizers say kale was chosen because it's one of the more, more nutritional vegetables. I can stand to watch that better than the hot dogs uh, and the yes, buns. I'll tell yes, you that right now. Indeed. Well, Tamir the Goat's quest for true love drew a big crowd in Russia. Tamir was propelled to internet fame when he developed an unlikely friendship with a tiger. After a violent falling out, the star-crossed pair were split up and Tamir was taken 4,000 miles west to Moscow. Now, Tamir hopes to find true love once more during the casting of four potential goat brides, two blondes and two brunettes. One organizer had her bets on Blondie, hoping that the pretty starlet would be the perfect match for the hoofed celebrity. There you go. Hmm. Kale and goats today. A lot of time spent trying to satisfy a goat. You just never that know in this segment ways. what we're going to give you. Yeah. So on that note, we're going to move ahead to 5 o'clock. We'll hope you'll join us.